Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Jayadeep Shorangi, Department of English, Jogesh Chandra Choudhury College, University of Calcutta, Kolkata. The module 4 of Old English period, Epic Poetry and this module is written by Professor Debomitra Kaur, Women's College, Kolkata. In this module, we are going to learn differ, different forms of narrative poems during the Old English period. By forms, we mean ballad, the presence of heroic poems and epic poems. We will also discuss on the examples of ancient oral epics and characteristics of them. We are also going to include our discussions on heroic poems like Battle of Maldon, Battle of Brunanba and partly we may refer to Battle of Finchpa. We begin our talk, we begin our talk with ballad. Ballad possibly you were aware of is a narrative poem. By narrative poem, we mean there is a narration of a tale, lays or songs with heroic quality is called a ballad. By heroic quality, we understand there will be heroic feats and also description of heroic potentials. Music is an important accompaniment of a ballad. It is composed in regular stanzas and sung to a recurrent tune. Ballads are originally orally transmitted, therefore it has a stereotype pattern for itself. The examples of ballad not from this age, but from a different period of history of English literature by Samuel Taylor Coleridge, Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Ballad became very popular literary type in the Romantic period, which is far away from this period that starts with uh, the publication of lyrical ballads. But some of the best known ballads are written by Sir Walter Scott, Samuel Taylor Coleridge, John Kitts. Kitts is famous for ballads, La Bain Dem Sons Mercy. And uh, the first person narrative mode of the ballads and the third person narrative mode of ballads, there is a contradiction, but as a whole, there are some political and social issues in ballads and there are some stock descriptive phrases we come across in ballads. In ballad, there is some repetition of a one particular phrase, we call it a refrain. So, friends, ballads are important part of literary corpus of any age. We started our discussion with ballad because ballad tells a story and we are dealing with epic, epic poem tells a story. Now we move on to our second point of discussion under this that is called heroic poem. It is a verse narrative. So, the commonality between ballad and heroic poem is a narrative pattern. It is a verse narrative of heroic deeds in the heroic age. That means, it is a reflection of the heroic age. It affords the tempo of an age. Many scholars opine that it is better to define the heroic poem by its time of composition. That means, 
when it is written, what are the cross currents when it is narrated. Yet, it is quite difficult to distinguish between the heroic poem and the epic. There are some fuzzy layers of gap between these two genres of poetry. Many scholars also use the phrase ballad, heroic poem and epic, keeping in mind their similarities. For instance, C. M. Baura, a reputed criti critic, puts all the primary epics under the category of heroic poetry. Heroic poetry can be seen as an evolutionary step towards the epic. We started our discussion with ballad. Now, heroic poems are heroic sagas, which led immediately to epic poetry in general. Now, the features of a heroic poem. The first prominent aspect of a heroic poem is, it is narrative. It is simple and objective in nature. The poem should be in magical cadence. It shows the greatness of a man, that means the heroic potentials in a man. It explores man's capabilities. It is impersonal in nature. Unlike any lyric poem, it is not a personal account. It is composed in a particular meter, sometimes heroic meter, but it is an oral creation. And of course, the basic nature of a heroic poem is spontaneity. It comes from within and it narrates a tell about people, land and with political agenda. The poem depicts an action in which the hero takes part and he proves his monumental feats and why he is called a hero. The action should reveal the importance of honor in hero's life. The poem is not democratic in nature, it is partial to the heroes. It is not about a community or meant for a community. It is a personal fit of a hero transmitted for the readers. It avoids the description of death. If death it is at all shown, it is to reveal the greatness of the achievement of the hero. That means, Death is not a subject which is quite unlike the elegy. An elegy is about death, destruction, whereas an epic poem does not show death. If it shows death, there should be there is something to do with the achievement of the greatness of the hero himself. The mental and moral qualities of the hero are more prominent than his physical proneness. The hero is a great leader. The read leader means of course, he leads a community or a group of people. The description is always realistic. There is no scope for enigmatic reflection of life. Even the magical creatures are realistically portrayed. There are certain set pieces of description like the mead halls or the fish of the sea or the sailing. There may must be some stock situations and the hero is involved with this stock situations. The theme of friendship is one of the predominant features of a heroic poem. Now friends, after a little bit of discussions of ballad, heroic poem, 
we come to our discussion on epic. I hope everyone present here knows any of the epics written in India. We are all aware of the Rama or Ravana in the Ramayana or the great Mahabharata war in the Mahabharata. We are proud of our epics. Similarly, here we are to learn the epic poetry written during the old English period. It is considerable to be one that the greatness forms the art as stated by Aristotle, art for art's sake. Epic is defined as a long verse narrative on a serious subject told in a formal or elevated style and the central on a heroic or quasi divine figure on whose actions depend the fate of a tribe or a nation or the entire human race as defined by Abrams. Now, if we look into this particular definition, it is a long narrative. So, epic poems cannot be small and can be read, read in one particular sitting. It is a serious subject. So, the presentation of a serious matter. It is told in a formal and elevated style. The epic poem demands a particular style, a grand style, the magnanimity style and the heroic or the quasi divine figure is to lead the nation or tribe or a community. So, the leadership faculties are to be there or associated with the epic hero. Now, the features of an epic poem, as we are already aware of the seriousness of an epic poem, we are aware of the prose narration of the epic poem, we are aware of the vastness of an epic poem. It is about man and written by man and addressed to man. There is always a high seriousness in an epic poem. It is greater in scope, therefore, all inclusive, all pervasive, panoramic by nature. It creates a heroic impression and it also has a core quality. It must have a well known story. The literary epic has some stylistic conventions, and we should not forget the fact that epic poems are written in grand magnanimous style. Friends, like the Mahabharata and the, Mahabha, and the Ramayana, I think those who are listening to this broadcast or those who are present here are aware of the Iliad and the Odyssey by Homer, two important epics of Europe. It is difficult to summarize the date of composition of these two great epics. Some critics believe that the two epics were composed by two different people, some disagree. The Iliad derives its name from Ilion, another name of Troy. It is divided into 24 books, look into the magnanimity and the vast corpus of an epic poem. Iliad comprises with 24 books. The subject of the poem is wrath of Achilles, which leads to the destruction of Troy. The Odyssey is the description of the journey undertaken by Odysseus, the Greek hero, to return to his home in Ithaca. It is after the seas of Troy and of the vengeance he took on the sweaters of his wife Penelope. The epic also shows 
the journey of the son of the son Telemachus to find his father. The epic is also divided into 24 books. So both Iliad and Odyssey comprises with 24 books. Though here the gods do not actively participate in the action, yet some of them hinder the journey of Odysseus while others aid him. That means intervention of gods is an important facet of an epic poem. May it be the Mahabharata, may it be the Ramayana or the Iliad or the Odyssey. Elder Edda, this is also known as Edda of Simardan or Edda of Simanda. It is a collection of 30 odd poems from the Icelandic region. They were probably composed around the end of the 12th century and it is a convenient to classify the poems according to the god they celebrate Odin, Thor, Freyr, Freyja and others. Standing apart as the heroic cycle concerning Sigurdur who killed the dragon Fenir. The presence of dragon announces again a creature not only human being but also animal in origin. Nebunglegd, the subject matter is of lead or a song appears in Norse. It is a part of Norse saga and Icelandic Idas. It goes back to the distant oral tradition. It is about the famous dragon and the slayer Siegfried and his beloved Kremlid, who are separated by the latter's kingsman. And it talks about the revenge. And the poem ends with cling or lament. Another important surviving work is Chanson the Roland. Chanson the Roland is the oldest and the finest of the surviving Chanson de Gaste, that means songs to celebrate the victory of the kings and heroes against the secretions. Constructed like a drama, it depicts the story of the annihilation of the Charlemagne's rearguard. It underscores the principles of the crusade and the vessel's extraordinary loyalty to the, his master. The poem is preserved in the Digby 23 manuscript in the Bodleian Library, Oxford. After Chanson the Ro Lowland, we can talk of the Battle of Brunanba is one of the heroic sagas. Both the battle of Bunanba and the battle of Maldon can be seen as the precursors of the first ever epic poem written in England, Beowulf. The battle of Brunanba is an English poem written in Old English period. It consists of 73 lines included in the Anglo-Saxon chronicle under the year 937 AD. It narrates the victory of the Saxon king Athelstan over Olaf Guthrenson, king of Dublin and the claimant of the throne of York. Now the battle of Maldon. The poem may have been composed around the 10th century or early part of the 11th century in the East Anglian dialect. It is a poetic description of the historical events of the Battle of Maldon that originally took place in the year 991 AD. In the original battle between Barthnot of Essex and the Danish chief Olaf Trigamson, the former was defeated 
the poem shows the pride of the English chief who allowed the enemy to get a van vantage point. Many critics have commented on the sagacity of the decision, but that does not comprise with the heroic spirit of the English army depicted in the poem. The Battle of Maldon is, a, is an important English action epic poem and one particular epic poem we have not discussed in this module because we are to give a special importance to this poem and the first important epic poem Beowulf. We have preserved our module 5 specially for the study of Beowulf. Friends, in this module 4, we have tried to cap capitalize our studies of knowledge of old English poetry or literary heritage by referring to ballads, heroic poems and epics. We, tr we tried our level best to conceptualize what is called a ballad, what are important ballads and what are its characteristics. We have also noted in what connection we started the module with ballad. Then we discussed at length about heroic poems. We also elaborately referred to available heroic poems during the old English period. We also said that heroic po poems prompted the epic tradition in England. Then we started our discussion on epic. We described epic from the definition of C. M. Bowra. Then we narrated its characteristics. Then we referred to some of the available epics written in different languages. We referred to the Iliad, the Odyssey and some of the epic poems written during the old English period. We ended our discussion with the study of Battle of Maldon and we also said that there will be special study on Beowulf in our module 5. Friends, we cannot end this module without any reference text. I know there are advanced learners. Could you note down a few reference texts? Number 1, C. M. Baura, Heroic Poetry published by Macmillan. Number 2, M. H. Abrams, A Glossary of Literary Terms, 7th edition. 2003. And the third book is very important, E. M. W. Tilliard, English Epic and its Background, Oxford University Press, London, 1966. And for online resources, please visit www.english.ox.ac.uk oblique course pack oblique Maldon. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Thank you.